Hi and welcome back to Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch. It is July 15th, 2021 and this is the first female pumpkin flower of the season that has bloomed today. You can see the baby fruit right there, the baby pumpkin that I'm hoping will get pollinated. These are all, this variety and all the varieties I'm growing this year is Howden, H-O-W-D-E-N. Howden variety is my favorite so I always have to grow it. And this is a, I trained this whole, all my pumpkins here in the backyard to go along a trellis system that my son and I put together. So I'm going to get up on this stepladder here and see what's inside. Now I have a phobia of bees, folks. <laughs> Hornets and wasps and anything else. So if it comes buzzing out at me, prepare to, for me to scream like a girl. <laughs> Anywho. You can see inside all the female parts and uh, it's got some activity inside there. So I'm hoping that this is going to lead to pollination and the growing of the first pumpkin. And let's see, I'm trying to do this. Okay, so I'm going to back off now and let them do their thing, but I just wanted to show you this. Um, things going on in the garden. Well, not too much. I've had uh, little minor setbacks for my pumpkin plants because I have been careless trying to micromanage all of them going in and out, weaving in and out of the trellises and everything. And I've ended up snapping a few of the pumpkin vines. And of course they will regrow the vines and send out suckers, if you will. And, uh, but I haven't, you know, I've gone a little too far with it as far as trying to micromanage it. And it's cost me some setbacks on my, uh, plants um, the ones here in the backyard are looking you know really good you can see the male flowers in there and this one is this particular one is starting to set out another vine down there you can see it's a bunch of new flowers going up in there and uh, So you can see how the vine going in and out. You can see this little white ooze right here, right there on my finger. Yeah, I had a little um, bread tie looking thing on there and it got caught. And it's sort of almost, it's kind of severed this vine a little bit. I'm hoping that it's going to be good enough, but I don't know. Because it's it, it's been compromised, which, you know, this is going to, see that right there? and compromise right on that spot right there so that means that anything else growing along it might eventually have so much weight that it snaps and breaks right there down the road so there's another female flower that may or may not get to the bloom stage um, you can see I've added a layer of pine shavings to the top of each of my uh, pots to try to help keep in some moisture. We've been having, oh, and it went a bee right into that flower, male flower right there. You can see him right in there. And uh, you might be thinking, see all that white patterning on the leaves? Well, you might think that that's powdery mildew, but this, in this case, it's not. This is just a, uh, coloring variation pattern that is on this particular one not all Howdens do this it's just that when you see that kind of patterning like that that's not powdery mildew so I am not concerned in the least um, I have been keeping up with my spraying program for uh, diseases um, and maybe I should do a video on just the various uh, 
products that I use, organic products that I use to try to deal with bugs and uh, diseases and things like that. So I, I probably will do a separate video. Right, Scooby? Scooby, do you think I should do a video? Huh? You don't want to be on camera? Okay, then. <laughs> Anyways, you can see down here how I've taken the vine and I've allowed it to grow up instead of along and then I'm doubling it back and having the growing tip and everything start to go this way. So it's a very delicate process. And uh, so I'm going to send this back this way. And the reason being is because of the nature of my environment i see i have all these big pine trees hanging right over top of my head i'm looking straight up and these big huge there's like three one two three four big trees that are providing so much shade in the backyard here uh and it is going to uh it casts so much shade into the backyard that right along maybe here is kind of where you, you're starting to run out of sunlight and as we get further into the year as the sun is uh, not going to stay up as high and as long as it's as it's been um, you know we're starting to head towards the season of fall you know we already had our summer solstice and so most of the sunlight stays here in the backyard on this side down here so and over there so i'm training everything to start now to head back that direction which might lead to some overcrowding issues at some point in time but i'll deal with that crisis when i get there and so you can see that this is the plot there's like four plants in there two on the side of the fence and two on the other side of the fence near the lawnmower type and the again the, everything is howled in varieties and these are all growing and coming along the trellis here this one was the closest one to the trellis so obviously it got there first and you can see here's a new vine right here that goes all the way back into there and wraps around on the other side of the fence and you can see this one is one of the other ones that are up there. And here is a third one. So I have four vines. The one to the left, the real long one. Two, three, right there. And number four is coming along right there. It had the longest to go. <laughs> that one I could short, I could bring it right through the fence right there and bring it right up. So that made a nice easy turn there. Uh, looks like there's a little bee down in that flower there. Oop, get my finger out of the way, sorry about that. Alright, so it's not like I don't have some activity back here. I'm just hoping that those bees will do their job and uh, pollinate that pumpkin flower down there. The rest of the things are going on. Uh, well, not, not a whole lot, you know, I'm, I'm harvesting tomatoes every couple days or so. And, uh, you can see I got a ton of them, and they've gotten up way up there, you know. And, uh, it's going to get to the point at some time here that I'm going to have to start making some decisions about getting rid of some of the plants. Because it's just gotten too overgrown, and, uh... You know, it's just that getting to be that time where, you know, it's, it's becoming a little too much to manage. And uh, so you have to start making some either decisions to, you know, cut, prune these things back. Back to some new growth where it's a little bit more manageable, you know. And eventually, I think my plan is, you know, especially on the left, uh, the left one there, the um, raised bed, the left one, is to clear that out maybe in a month or two um, 
once those maybe once those uh, tomatoes there ripen and then maybe I might get rid of that and then freshen up the bed with some fresh compost and then go in and maybe add in some carrots because that that bed on the left there does not get much sunlight or it, it gets decent amounts but not nearly as much because it's near the house um, so I might have to put in a crop that can go ahead and be all right with with little to uh, with little sunlight and carrots I think can handle that though it, we'll see if that causes them to be smaller I'm imagining it will because you know it needs plenty of photosynthesis so maybe I'll just do two or three rows closest to the uh, right side of the bed so it'll get more sunlight being further from the house and maybe the left side I'll put some lettuce in there or something like that that can use ambient more ambient light to deal with it so let's go up to the front and you see this is where the two plants are on this side this is where they started I just got them through the fence and there they go so let's see what's happening on the other side and beautiful orange trees see all that new growth there the brighter green all that new growth this thing is put on a ton of foliage I am so happy with this one this is a blood orange Moro variety. Moro, Moro, M O R O W, though it may be two R's. Very delicious orange. Best tasting orange I've ever had. Really powerful orange flavor. Loved it. So I will get uh, some oranges next year. None this year, and that's because it had a setback due to the cat using the fabric pot as its bathroom and all that nitrogen defoliated the plant but I rescued it transplanted it in fresh clean soil rinsed out all the root system with hose and water and she has recovered so nicely I'll see if I can step back in and you can see the the low roof there the garage door and everything you can see how this thing has come back nicely the one to the left right there is a navel orange tree it's new to this year so it's it's put on some new growth and everything I don't know it did, um, it did bloom a few oranges this year, though none of them got pollinated. Um, so maybe next year, we'll see. It needs to get stronger. There's another blood orange tree right there, and it's put on some new growth. Uh, this is brand new to me this year. And, uh, you know, it. I think it had a couple blooms or so this year. Um, but, you know, nothing obviously stuck, but it's okay. Next year should hopefully be good. It's a nice, decent, cool morning out here. Maybe I'll take a dog for the walk. Take it for a walk. A couple pineapple plants in their second growing season. So it's starting to put on some growth. So that's that's good. It's just kind of an experimental thing. Some ginger. Uh, and these are all bell peppers right there. Uh, three white clouds which are a very good variety I've been I've been harvesting some of the peppers to make for my pizzas and everything and down there are three orange varieties I don't remember all their uh, names I have to look up my emails and see what I ordered but you can see this bell pepper right here really huge getting uh, ripening now maybe what I should do is probably rotate this pepper plant around so that that bell pepper is facing the sun and allow it to ripen faster uh, maybe that's something I should do and you can see the white cloud variety um, bell peppers and everything and they're doing pretty decent um, they will turn to a kind of orangey coloring when they start to get ripe. Um, I harvested one yesterday that was a little bit of a, had some orange to it, but also still had a little bit of white left on it. It was really pretty, really pretty. 
Um, so I'm, I was liking that. I'm really liking that. Now we have my pumpkin plants out here in the front that are growing across the yard. Uh, nothing a whole lot to show here. Um, you know, they're they're growing. Some things have had a little bit of disease. I had to come in and prune those out and get rid of them. And then I sprayed last night with a uh, disease control product to um, try to help things along. And they're doing okay. Nothing, nothing major here. I think the ones in the backyard are doing better, but these are a couple weeks behind uh, those plants. So anyhow, no females really getting doing anything here. Blueberries are all done for the year. They're just putting on new growth. As you can see, the lighter colors, lighter shades of green, um, is where the new growth is. The darker green is the older growth. It's pretty simple. Um, had quite a bit of Japanese beetles out here. I've never really had so many attack my blueberries in the uh, past, but this year these things have come in here. And I, I have a good reason why. I've been spraying my plants for bugs, for Japanese beetles and other things. But I haven't really sprayed the blueberries because nothing was really attacking them. So what I think happened was they were attacking my peach trees. And I went and I sprayed in there enough that I think it drove them out. And they went to the next source of food, which happened to be my blueberries, which I wasn't spraying. And by the time I noticed what was going on, they had already, you can see some of the damage. All that brown coloring and chewed up leaves and everything uh, was done by them. And... Uh, They uh, they did a number. Look at all of that. You know, so this one seems to have taken the brunt of it, but they're under control now. Uh, Japanese beetles are on the run. <laughs> on to the peach trees. On to the peach trees. Well, the peaches are coming along. As you can see, they're getting color to them and everything, so they're doing nicely. Um, I come out here pretty much every single day and I check them for uh, any kind of bug issues or anything like that. And I'm, you know, finding that I think I've gotten around the corner here on the bugs you know moths and everything that are laying eggs see you see how this is getting a really nice color um look at that this is an alberta peach tree and like i said look at that nice red coloring nice yellow coloring i'm not saying it's huge in size you know it's about maybe maybe that tall from top to bottom so that's not too bad. This is my first time getting peaches ever. And uh, yeah, these some of these are getting uh, really nice growth. Uh, some of them are, you know, small to medium. But uh, these things are not ready yet. As I'm giving them a squeeze, these things are still rock solid. Uh, so the flesh is, you know, needs to be tender soft there needs to be a nice aroma a peach smell in the air or at least put your nose up to it and it should smell that so i'll be doing some of that later on to start seeing if they're getting close to ripe like i said this is the middle of july july 15th to be exact so this is a new experience for me and uh so we'll see we'll see how things go i'll keep you updated on that um not a whole lot happening with strawberries. Um, they're still growing some, but I think the bugs seem to be, or local habitat seems to get to them before I do lately. <laughs> this uh, peach tree right here is a very tall peach tree, but it did not really produce anything this year except 
a lot of flowers. Now, I did get two peaches off of it, but they're very small. This is like golf ball size, maybe just a tad bit bigger, but they're not growing. Um, you can see the comparison between the Alberta peach, you know, so they're doing better. Anyways, this thing put on a ton of flowers, but just nothing really got uh, pollinated. But the Alberta peach tree, on the other hand, did. This is a Finger Lake variety, by the way. Uh, very healthy, nice tree. It just did not really set any fruit. I was very surprised. I mean, this thing was loaded with blossoms. Um, we'll see what happens next year. The Alberta peach tree doing good, so that's just about it. Um, nothing else really going on, so just maintaining vigil on the pumpkins. I haven't seen any squash bugs. Haven't seen any signs of vine borer action. Uh, the squash vine borers, haven't seen them. Uh, thankfully, the bees have finally come around. They finally found all my pumpkin flowers. I was a little worried at first because they didn't seem to be doing it here in, back in the city, but... Uh, they got to them. They're here, front yard and back. So, uh, yeah, not much else to go on. And uh, like I said, I think I'll do a video on the products that I use to maintain diseases and bug issues and things like that. Um, maybe even my fertilizer uh, products that I use. Okay, well, from Pittman's, Pittman's, <laughs> from Pittman's pumpkin patch, Pittman's garden patch. Y'all have a great day. Take care. Bye.